टिश्यू कल्चर पार्ट टू माइक्रो प्रोपगेशन रिफर्स टू ए टेक्निक ऑफ रैपिड वेजिटेटिव प्रोपगेशन ऑफ प्लांट्स ऑफ एग्रीकल्चरल एंड हॉर्टिकल्चरल वैल्यू इन्वॉल्विंग सेल एंड टिश्यू कल्चर इट्स प्राइम ऑब्जेक्टिव इज टू प्रोड्यूस प्लांट्स दैट आर जेनेटिकली आइडेंटिकल प्लांट टिश्यू कल्चर हैज मेनी एडवांटेजेस ऑफ मल्टीप्लीकेशन then the conventional method of vegetative propagation with a single cell or small groups of cells it is possible to raise a large progeny in a shorter period in culture vials there are three methods by which plants multiply clonally through tissue culture one apical meristem of a plant is culture to produce a large number of shoot buds two any plant part can develop shoots sometimes through an intervening step of callus formation roots can be induced in these shoot buds before they transfer to the soil three either directly or through callus mass a large number of somatic embryos are produced from the plant part which is similar to zygotic embryos found in seeds that produce complete plants the embryos can be encapsulated by a proper gel to produce artificial seeds which can be handled like normal seeds but produce plants true to a single parent production of artificial seeds is a revolutionary step in micropropagation which is being widely used in propagating papaya coconut and potato in vegetatively propagated plants pathogens viruses are transmitted through the propagules that is root tuber bulb rhizome etc however in virus infected plants only the meristematic cells of the apical dome are devoid of the virus hence by using shoot apical meristem culture virus free plants can be raised notable examples of the same are disease free strawberries potatoes etc anther and pollen culture create many haploid plants Pollen embryogenesis is a good system to induce, detect and analyze mutants as many haploid cells are available that have the potential of developing into plantlets. Haploids are rare in nature. Over 250 plant species like barley, maize and tomato have been successfully developed by this method. In plant breeding programs All desirable crosses are not successful. In hybrid seeds, some embryos abort before reaching maturity, thus rendering the seeds non-viable. Such immature embryos can be grown in a more hospitable environment inside the culture vials, making it possible to raise a complete hybrid plant. This method of premature birth is used in obtaining hybrid fruit trees like peach cherry and plum similarly embryo rescue has been used to grow embryos from hybrids between common bean and a wild species this hybrid is not only disease tolerant but has several other desirable characters the culture of embryos from normal seeds may sometimes be used to shorten breeding cycles chemical mutagens are used in cell cultures to induce mutations suitable mutants are then subjected to herbicides and toxins the mutants that are resistant survive while the others perish such selected mutant cells are then grown to obtain plantlets for agricultural purposes The variability generated by the use of tissue culture cycle is called somaclonal variation. 
A major success of tissue culture has been the generation of disease-resistant genotypes like sugarcane and potato. Its primary application has been the recovery of new genotypes with increased tolerance to plant diseases. The variability in somoclonal is attributed to pre-existing variability in explants. Tissue culture induced variability. Somatic recombination in tissue culture. Chromosomal aberrations and transposon mutagenesis. Somatic hybridization involves physical union of protoplasts from two parents made possible by new techniques for enzymatic isolation of protoplasts and their subsequent regeneration. Plants that show physical or chemical incompatibility in normal sexual crosses may be produced by somatic hybridization. Somatic hybridization involves 1. Isolation of protoplasts from suitable plants 2. Mixing of protoplasts in centrifuge tube containing fugigenic chemicals or by electrofusion to produce heterocaryons. 3. Wall regeneration by heterokaryotic cells. 4. Fusion of nuclei of heterokaryon to produce hybrid cells. 5. Plating and production of colonies of hybrid cells. 6. Selection of hybrid subculture and induction of organogenesis in the hybrid colonies. 7. Transfer of mature plants from the regenerated callus. Somatic hybridization is important for introducing useful genes like those for male sterility, herbicidal resistance, etc. Plant genetic engineering involves insertion of the desired gene, chemically synthesized or isolated from bacteria, animal or taxonomically unrelated plant or group of genes into a suitable vector system such as diaplasmid or agrobacterium tumefaciens chosen for its ability to eventually transfer the DNA to plant cells. The desired DNA can thus be introduced into single cells of the plant. These cells containing the new gene in one of their chromosomes multiply and are persuaded to regenerate a plant in which each cell of every tissue contains a new gene. Some transgenic plants developed through genetic engineering are Barnes and Barstar and Brassica species which are transgenics for male sterility and bruise resistant tomato like flower sour which are transgenics for food processing. Isolated plant cells were first grown on an artificial medium in 1902. With progress in the field today it is not only possible to culture and induce divisions in isolated single cell but also to regenerate whole plants from it.